Hi everyone, this is Pierre Rick from P2Design. The newest long-term support version of Blender just landed. It's time for me to go over some of the new rigging and animation features you may have missed in Blender 4.2 but also in the previous Blender 4 versions. Some overlays are now context sensitive. You can still find the main overlays in the overlays menu, but some options are only accessible whenever you are in the specific mode they are used by. In this case, I can see both the pose mode and wind painting mode overlays, making the default overlays less cluttered. Talking about visibility, we can filter selectability and visibility per object type directly in the header. That's super handy for animators, as we can lock the selectability of all objects but armatures, for example, preventing us from selecting or moving any object, lights or whatever by mistake. Bone wire width can now be modified, so you can now easily make your custom bone shape thicker, improving your rig readability. We already knew about bone collections, but we can now solo a collection. That's super handy. No need to hide all the other collection to display only one collection or two if you want. If you hold the shift, you can solo multiple collections at once. The option is pretty easy to expose in your rig UI. And since I added it to my rig UI, I use it all the time. Here you can see the line of script used to expose the his solo option. But you can also download this rig for free and check out the script yourself. The next one can be seen as a small improvement, but you will save tons of time with it. If you rig, you may often use the option to copy the constraint from one bone to another, going to Pose, Constraint, Copy Constraint to select it. But this will copy all the constraint from the active bone to the selected bones. But now, through the drop-down menu of any constraint, you can choose to copy specific constraint to the selected bones. And that's really cool. And this new option is not only available for constraints, but also for drivers. Bone A is driven by the bone called driver. I can select bone B, shift click bone A to make it active, and I can right click and choose to copy a single driver to bone B, or copy all the drivers at once on bone B. When I now move my driver bone, both bone A and bone B get the same behavior. And this will work on any property bound to a bone. Bone A has a constraint with a couple of drivers that come from the driver bone. Bone B has one constraint targeting the driver. It's a copy rotation. If I select bone B and make bone A active, and if I right-click on the driven property of the copy rotation constraint of bone A, I can use copy driver to select it. And now both bone A and bone B copy rotations have the same driver. With those options, we can now easily copy a specific constraint from one bone to another, and then copy its driver from one constraint to another. And if you rigged before, I guess you did that a lot of times. Now, what you have to understand is that Blender identifies the property by name. So in that case, it searches for the influence of the constraint named copy scale. So if I change the name of the copy scale constraint, I can no longer copy the driver from the other copy scale constraint because they don't have the same name. Or if I choose to change the name of my copy rotation constraint to copy scale so that it's even more confusing. So the constraint of bone A and bone B being a copy scale and copy rotation are now both named copy scale. I can copy the driver from one constraint to another even though they are not the same constraint type. So just be cautious with that to properly name your constraint or do not rename them at all. If you want to learn animation, rigging and much more in Blender, discover my extensive courses on p2designacademy.com. Learn actual professional techniques or enjoy all my exclusive free character rigs only on p2designacademy.com. When animating, the eye shortcut no longer open the King menu. 
It will instead insert a keyframe following your king set that are available in the timeline. And if no king set is defined, it will key the channels and properties enabled in the preferences. In this case, if I disable everything but rotation mode, with my top two controller selected, if I press I, you can see that only the rotation mode has been keyed. That's why I generally use the king set available, so that I only key channels and property I manually keyed at the very beginning of the animation stage. The insert keyframe menu is now triggered by the K key, allowing me to insert a keyframe regardless of the king set. In this example, I can choose location and rotation and only those channels will be keyed. And we can change the king set type by pressing the shift K shortcut. If I pick location and press I, only location will be keyed. My workflow hasn't changed that much. Whenever I begin a new animation, I generally press K and choose the whole character option. If I don't know the rig, I will select the controllers and choose whole character selected bones only. What I like about those two is that they will key the custom properties and they won't key any locked channel. Then I can press Shift K and switch to available. This way, whenever I'm posing my character, only the channel that already received the keyframe will be keyed, keeping my animation data super clean. On top of that, through the preferences, we can now enable the only insert needed option. The manual option will be triggered whenever you press I manually, while the auto option will be triggered by the auto keying enabled through the timeline. If I select my character's foot, and I now change its location, only its location will be keyed. If I change both the location and rotation, both the location or rotation get keyed, and you guessed it, changing the scaling keys the scale too. Check out this complete guide by Rick from the Blender Studio. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and dropping a nice comment. The motion path now feature a before and after color. By default, it still has this light blue color, but if you enable custom color, you can set a different color for the before and after position, making it way more readable. One cool feature that was also added a while ago is that you can now calculate the motion path in camera space. So now I do know where my character is in the camera view. This drastically improves the polishing stage. And obviously, you can change those custom colors at will. Check out this video to truly understand how cool the motion path is for your animations. One great update associated with the NLA is the action baking. We can now choose what kind of channel we are baking. Location, rotation, scale, the b-bone options, and even custom properties. Being able to bake custom properties is awesome, especially if you switch mechanism during an animation, forward and inverse kinematics, for example. So you can now have cleaner baked data, ignoring the channels you don't need. There are also a lot of improvement in the way we manipulate strips, making their editing way smoother and comfortable. I didn't cover all the improvement in both performances and tools. There will be a lot to say since the last long-term support version of Blender, but I wanted to show my favorite ones and I'll see you in the next video.